uh, Mr. President. Uh, we are in a uh, quorum call. I ask unanimous consent uh, that the quorum call be vitiated. Without objection. Uh, the Mr. Senator President. from Wyoming. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Mr. President, I come to the floor today to discuss the urgent need to get our kids back in school. Kids deserve to be back in school. Last week, the White House Chief of Staff was on television. He was interviewed. And the interviewer asked him why so many public schools remain closed. His answer, amazingly, astonishingly, was money. Now, if I may, Mr. President, the record is very clear. Republicans supported more money for schools since last summer. A full $105 billion to get our kids back to school. In fact, the Senate Republicans' targeted coronavirus bill included more money for schools than Speaker Pelosi included in her bloated liberal wish list. For months, Senate Democrats obstructed, delayed, dragged their feet. For months, Democrats played politics with coronavirus relief. And all that time, families across America suffered. It wasn't until the end of December that Democrats finally agreed to pass legislation to reopen the schools, and it included $82 billion, less than the Republicans had offered from last summer. Well, the ink is now barely dry on the overall relief bill at the end of last year. It's a $900 billion relief bill. So here we are, just one month later, and the new administration says that there's no money to reopen schools. The White House Chief of Staff goes on television with a supposedly new idea. And the idea is that, quote, we as a country should make the investment to make it safe to get back to school. Astonishing. Because, Mr. President, we did that. If the Biden administration really wants our schools to reopen, they ought to be talking to the teachers' union. They should talk to the leaders of the teachers' unions in places like Fairfax County, Virginia, just a few miles from here. Now, it's one of the largest school districts in America. Fairfax County teachers demanded a vaccine before they would go back to the classroom. Thanks to Operation Warp Speed, they got the vaccine. Yet, they still refuse to go back to the classroom, which, of course, means that the students aren't in the classroom either. In Chicago, the teachers' union is threatening to go on strike rather than to go back into the classroom which, of course, means the students that don't get to go to back into the classroom either. In Washington, D.C., the teachers' union would rather go to court than to the classroom, which means that students don't get to go back to the classroom either. Similar stories are taking place all across America. The union bosses might think this is just a big game. The truth is, this is doing terrible things to our children. Our teachers do incredible work. Many are working harder than ever in the virtual setting. Many want to go back to the classroom. And yet, because of the union bosses who pull the strings, our kids are being denied access to in-person learning by our amazing teachers. On Wednesday, the New York Times said it was, quote, breaking news, breaking news in the New York Times that the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention wants the kids back in school. Mr. President, that's not breaking news. That's old news. The CDC said it last July. Now, experts have been echoing this call for months. One study estimated that because of the lockdown last spring, a typical student entered this school year 35 percent behind schedule in reading and nearly 50 percent behind in math. The children hurt the most are, of course, the most vulnerable. Kids from lower-income families, like the millions of kids who receive nutrition assistance, medical care, or counseling in public school. 
also the children of single parents, many of whom, the parents that is, can't work from home. According to the National Education Association, a quarter of the families with kids aged 5 to 17 either don't have a computer or don't have wireless internet. So the lockdowns have been especially tough in all of those kids in those settings. Now, for many children, the lockdown has been far tougher on their health than coronavirus itself would be. That's because serious coronavirus symptoms among healthy children is extremely rare. And Congress has provided funding to prevent kids from spreading the coronavirus. Done it by improving ventilation, by supporting social distancing, and by disinfect disinfecting our classrooms. So while Democrats were taking the orders from teachers' unions, Senate Republicans listened to the science. It's time for Democrats to decide, are they going to put our kids first, or are they going to continue to put the teachers' unions ahead of our kids? Senate Republicans have done our part to reopen our schools with incredible amounts of funding and support. There's no time for excuses. No time for backtracking. The science supports it. We have provided the funding. Now, I would point out, Mr. President, the students in Wyoming have been back in school since September. That's where students belong. Kids deserve to be in school. So let's get our kids back in the classroom. It's what's best for kids. Certainly, it's what's best for working families. And it's what's best for our future as a nation. Thank you, Mr. President. I yield the floor and suggest the absence of a quorum.